Hello, everyone. Welcome to another lesson. <laughs> okay, we're starting with the puns, and I love it. Tina says, I am objectively looking forward to it. Same here. <laughs> Welcome. Real quick, what are we doing? Uh, my name is Ramon. My friend Jess and I are running this series of free boot camps to learn uh, both web development and JavaScript. We are in week five of our JavaScript boot camp. We are going through the free code camp lessons the brand new curriculum, which is really exciting. Um, if you want to catch up, don't worry. We've got everything recorded on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash at bad website club. Um, if you want to keep up with the schedule, you can go to badwebsite.club. Let me just put that in there into the chat. You'll find it now. Badwebsite.club. And the last part is by joining this bootcamp, you agree to abide by our code of conduct. So please, if anything seems out of sorts, uh, please let either Jess or myself know. You'll find us most likely hanging around on Discord. Okay, yeah, and it's just me today. Jess sends her best. It's just, we're just gonna be chilling with me today. And I promise it'll be a lot of fun. We're gonna be learning object-oriented programming. We've done functional programming before, which in several cases could seem a little bit convoluted and object oriented is another approach which can be mixed with functional programming because javascript is both a object oriented programming language and it also supports functional programming and when we think of objects we've already been working with objects for a very long time we've been having our curly brackets with properties and with properties which involve keys and values Another thing we're going to be picking up during this series of lessons, which is going to be two days, is a concept of classes, which we can use to create objects. Fun fact, y'all have already been using a couple of classes, like date, and another one that I can't think of right now. <laughs> but date's one of them, for sure. The hint is when you see the new keyword. So new, something that's going to give us it's going to involve some kind of constructor, which is a part of a class as well. But hey, enough of me talking. Let's get right in and see what we're going to be building. So for this project, we're going to be working with a shopping cart. We've got a desserts page here. We can add, can we add stuff? Yeah, we can add stuff to our cart. We can add more than one thing of a cart. Fantastic. Now. Like in the last couple of lessons, we've already had a bunch of HTML and CSS pre-written for us, especially involving some containers. We've got a cart container, show hide cart span, uh, button, pardon me, a cart button, show hide cart span. This is going to be for the show and hide section of it, as well as some sections for total, taxes, subtotal, total items. We're going to be working with a bunch of these. The CSS, we can look at if we want. It's CSS to make the website look uh, in a specific style. But we're going to focus on JavaScript. I haven't written any code yet. And in fact, what we're going to do is something we've done quite a few times already, is define a few variables to match elements on our page. And we're going to be using document get element by ID to do that. So the first is card container. And you know what? Before I even do the full lines, I'm just going to write out the names of the variables. So const products containers and const dessert card. I can spell, I promise. Cool. Hello, hello, folks coming in. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the lesson, Gillen element by ID. Do you know what? I'm going to make myself a little bit more space here. So the first one is, and remember, we're using get element by ID, so we don't need a, um, a hashtag. So that's cart, cart container. Oh, look, I spelled it wrong. There we go. My bad. Cart container. I might copy paste this because we're going to be doing a couple of document get element by IDs. Next, we got products container. And finally, we've got dessert card container. Dessert. Card container. So this is stuff we've done before. So I'm rushing a little bit through it, but you know what? We still get a green a green bar. We pat ourselves on the back, pat pat. We keep going. Okay. Next, we're going to get our two buttons. Same same thing as before. So const cart btn 
is, oh, look, I still have it copy pasted. Cart BTN. And next one is const clear cart BTN. Same thing as before. Clear cart BTN. And cool. So we've set up some more variables for elements on our page. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Cool. So if you see this pop up, remember that this bootcamp is free. And free code camp is also free, but and they're a, a registered nonprofit which you can donate to if you can, if you want to. Don't be spending money you don't have. Just make sure that you can know that you can come back later and donate. So we can click on Ask Me Later. Ah, great. Let's keep going. Ah, some more elements. Cool. Total number of items is equals to element get to element by blah, document get element by the total items. Const the total is the oops. See this this is the perils of copy pasting. Subtotal. Then we've got card taxes and card total. And then our ID there is taxes. Hello, everybody coming in. Good to see you. And remember, this is live. So if you want to ask questions, please feel free. Um, and if you're watching later, uh, come ask questions in Discord, please. OK, I think I got everything. Fantastic. Pat, pat. Now we've got, I hope, all of our elements set up. No, nope, one more. Oh, hold on a second. We've got, oh, we've got our variable show hide cart span. That's going to be the title of the button. So show hide cart. And then we've got a let variable to, ah, is cart showing? Which I would imagine involves whether the cart is displayed or not. And we're going to set it to a Boolean value of false. So at the beginning, the cart is not showing. That makes sense. Fantastic. Pad that. Now, our shopping cart, of course, if we don't have products to show, we're not going to be able to do much. So we're going to declare a products variable and set it to be an empty array. This being an array is going to allow us to store multiple products. So there we go, pat, pat, and we'll keep going. Now, once we start considering products, we're going to start considering the structure of what a product look like, looks like. And when we do programming like this, what we're considering is the data structure. You might have heard the term. Actually, you can see it here in Free Code Camp, algorithms and data structures. And this is what we're considering here, that what is the data, what is the structure of our data, which in this case, the structure of a product. And a lot of this time, a lot of the time we are either given this by our team or somebody who's like a um, software architect will design it for us. A lot of the time when we're working on our own products, we might, you know, design it by um, intuition or perhaps might need to come back and change it later. So. In this case, we've got a unique identifier, which is a number to, distinct, to distinguish a product from each other. You might be thinking, well, why can't the name do that? You could. It's not impossible. You could have two products with the same name. So using an, a unique identifier that you know is always going to be different is very helpful. The price, the name, and a category for each product. So we're going to start by building our first product here. So the ID is going to be one. The name is going to be, well, I'm going to copy paste this. Thank you very much. Vanilla cupcakes, six pack. Oh, I love vanilla cupcakes. The price is going to be a floating point number, a float, $12.99. And the category is going to be a string called cupcake. So there's our first Product looks good. Pat, pat. And we'll keep going. And I would imagine we're probably, oh my goodness. We are going to add, whoa, that's a lot of products. Okay. Friends, don't be mad at me. 
I'm going to do a couple of these and then I'll skip to the next step because I want to spend our time more effect uh, effectively learning the concepts of object-oriented programming, okay? I'll do a couple of these. I'll explain like what each would look like. The instruction is that when we make a new product, and yeah, you know what? I'm going to copy and paste it. Remember the instructions say each ID needs to be unique. And so what we're going to do is for each product, we're going to increment by one. That is where each ID is going to be one higher than the last one. So we'll start with a French macaron. Macaron. I can't, sorry, I can't do the that throaty R. My uh, my Spanish speaking instincts want to roll the R. Berke, I see your question. I'm going to save it for Q and A. Thank you very much. See, otherwise I'm going to be like scrolling up and down a lot, and that's just kind of. It was kind of dizzying and not fun. So there's one product. We've made a French macaron, $3.99. The category is macaron. Can't do it. I didn't do very well in French class in school. So we got a pumpkin cupcake that's also $3.99, and the category is cupcake. Mm -hmm. Category is cupcake. And ah, don't forget, we got to make the ID go up by one. Oopsie. Let's do one more. So I've just copy pasted it. Increment by one. It's called a chocolate cupcake. This step was a lot of typing. It really was. Like I'm usually okay with typing, but I just want to make sure that we're I'm using our time more effectively. Wait, did I just I did that wrong? Yeah. Chocolate cupcake. Five ninety nine in the category is cupcake. It also makes me hungry. Makes me hungry too. And I just had ice cream. <laughs> um. So we've got yeah. So we've made a couple of these. And I'm sorry to skip. I just want to make sure that we're using our time more effectively. So we just copy and paste a bunch of these. And if I skip over to step eight, which I'm doing as we speak, we can see that there are the twelve items. And you can see that each ID is incremented by one. We need to make 100% sure that each ID is unique, meaning that they're different from one another. OK, so now that we have our list of products, we're going to use JavaScript to put them into our HTML. So we're going to do a for each loop on our products array. Uh, and I will have this, let's go with product. And this will have an empty callback function. Did I do this right? You should use sy arrow syntax to create an empty callback function. But I thought I did. Maybe it wants the brackets around the parameter. Do you know what? Maybe it doesn't even want the parameter. I knew it. That's a pet pet. I bet we're going to add the parameter later. Uh, we're not going to add it because we're going to use destructuring. We know what the structure of a product is. It has an ID, a name, a price, and a category. So what we're going to do is instead of defining like a parameter called product, and then inside we'd need to make a variable for product.id, product.name, product.price, and so on and so forth, we're going to use destructuring by using the curly brackets and saying name, ID, price, category so that we can access those values immediately. Cool. Pat, pat, we've done this before. Feeling pretty good about it. Now, we are going to, oh, we're going to use the addition assignment operator for the inner HTML property of the dessert cards variable. We're going to be writing some HTML now. So dessert cards dot inner HTML plus equals, so remember, we're looping through each product and adding to its HTML with some template, template literals. You probably guessed it already. We are going to be writing some, in, some inline HTML. Yep. So like before, if you can, you can donate a couple of dollars a month but you can come back later as well. 
Oh, Tower Brilliant says, I type too slow. I want to say something to that. Typing slow, typing fast, it doesn't make or break you as a programmer. Me, I have to think a lot, so my typing ends up being slow anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to, in our new HTML that, remember, comes from each product. <gasps> look, 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 look. You can already see that it's adding. You just see, all I did was type in a uh, smaller than sign, and it added one for each product. But that's not what we want. We want a div. And the class of that div is dessert-card. Now you might be wondering, wait, 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 where's this coming from? Remember, you have two ways of doing this. Either you can inspect that element in the browser dev tools, or you can come back here. Dessert. What is it called? Dessert card? Check it out. There's our background color. It's got some padding. It's got a border radius that makes it look round, and it's got a margin around it. So that's why they're showing up. OK, so inside that div, we're going to write a h2 element. And its text, we're going to be using the dollar sign curly bracket syntax to inline the name variable. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love it when this stuff works on the first try, Does, don't you? Sometimes I get a little freaked out, but yeah. Let's check our code. Pat, pat. And let's keep going. So cool. After our h2, we're going to be adding two p elements. I might copy paste this. Um, class is going to be dessert price for the first one and for the second one. No, hold on. Dessert price. The first variable. Oh, and the text of price of the price variable with a dollar sign in front of it. Dollar sign. And then using the dollar sign curly bracket syntax, we're going to put in. Ah, cool. Nice. Cool. Below that, a class of product category. And its text will be. At the oh, hold on. Category colon space, and then the value of the category variable. Nice, look at that. I love it when this stuff works out. Having pre written CSS is really nice. Oh, I almost pat patted like without checking. Yeah, there we go. Pat pat. <laughs> Let's keep going. And below that, uh, I think I know what's coming next. It's a button, of course. That makes sense. We're going to have the button to have the add to cart category. Add to cart. Now, our button is going to have the ID set to be the ID of the um, product. And the class is going to be add. Add to cart ETN. Did I do that right? Hold on. Ah, BTN space add to cart BTN. There we go. That's two classes in one. Cool. Doesn't do anything because we haven't written any JavaScript for it. So that makes sense. Pat, pat. And let's keep going. Ha ha ha. Now we're going to start writing our first JavaScript class. Now, we've talked a lot about HTML classes, and this is going to be different. A class in HTML is a denoter, is a, is a marker that you can put on an HTML element and say, hey, there are more than one element with this class. For example, BTN. For example, uh, what was it called? Uh, dessert price, dessert card. These are HTML and CSS classes. Classes in JavaScript are completely different. They're like a recipe for making an object. Here they call it a blueprint, where we predefine a set of properties that it'll have, methods that it'll have, and what happens when you make or instantiate a new object from that class. 
And this all sounds a little bit fuzzy right now, but I promise it's going to make sense, or at least more sense, I hope, in a bit. Now, the way to define a class is with the class keyword. So in our case, we want to create a new shopping class, a, a new a new class called shopping cart. So we've got class shopping cart. Notice it's in uh, what's it called? Camel case, capitalized camel case. So the first letter is capitalized. This is a pattern that we follow when creating classes. I think it is possible to make a class with a lowercase, but you don't. You really don't see that. Like you might see it, but I know I've often said like, um, um, you might see it, but it's, and I know I keep saying like best practices are what you make of them and be consistent. I rarely see classes with lowercase. Okay. So we're declaring a new class. Now here's the thing. Check it out. We have a class called shopping cart. And you remember how I was talking about you can instantiate it. Const cart equals new shopping cart cart. This is how you instantiate an object from a class. Now you might be wondering, okay, but what, what is this class? Great question. How about we console log cart? It's an empty object. So right now this class, oh, I'm so sorry, this class when instantiated gives us an empty object, which doesn't seem very helpful right now, but you're going to see how it's going to become much more helpful in a bit. But for now, we pat pat and we keep going. Now, in classes, we can have properties and we can have um, and we can have methods. And methods are functions that live inside a class. I'll show you what I mean. We've got our class shopping cart. Let's skip the constructor for now. Let's. We've got our class shopping cart. Let's define a function that lives inside this class. When I talk about functions that are inside classes, I call these. We call these methods, and we've been call, using the word method for a long time. Arrays have methods. Some objects have methods. This class has. Let's give this class a shopping cart that says greet. Hear me out. Okay. Console log. Hello. Hello, I am a shopping log. We're not going for most imaginative here. Okay? So this method takes no parameters and its code when run says console log, hello, I am a shopping card. Now, let's instantiate a new cart. Let's console log the card itself. Still an empty object, or so it would seem. But notice what happens when I call cart.greet. So we've defined a, a function that lives inside this instantiated object from the class that we've defined to have this function, this method, greet. Of course, a shopping cart isn't going to, the shopping cart isn't going to greet you. Tower Brilliant says, wait, the method is greeting? There's no greeting, it's just greet. So this method is called greet. And what it does is it console logs that. So that when we make a new cart, we can call this method on it. We can have a different method. Uh, say goodbye. Console log. Goodbye, I'm still a shopping cart. Look, we're not going for imagination. So now it's got two methods. <laughs> it's not a typo, you're good. Um, yeah, so now it's got two methods, greet and say goodbye. Right now, if I call greet on that new cart, it says, hello, I'm a shopping cart. If I call say goodbye on that shopping cart, goodbye, I'm still a shopping cart. Oh, no, just saying we don't need to write the function keyword. No, we do not. This is a method on our class. This is special to classes. Okay. Now, there is a special arrow functions allowed in classes. I would stick with this. 
there's a special method called constructor. This one's a little bit weird. Constructor gets called automatically when you make a new shopping cart. Hear me out. So const cart equals new shopping cart. Now notice what happens. This constructor method, even though I didn't call it, got called automatically when I made a new shopping cart. This is the case with every method, OK? Uh, every class, sorry. Let me try that again. This is the case with every class. When you make a new instance of a class, it will call the, it the constructor method. If there is no constructor method defined, it still gets called, but it doesn't do any. It just gives you an empty object. This is a little bit confusing, but just think about it as this is a function that we can use to be run when we make a new instance of an object. If I console log cart, no, just so it just says default constructor. Perfect. Thank you. It's still an empty object. So, okay. The instructions want us to create the constructor method. There we go. Pat, pat. You might be wondering, well, okay, cool. So we can define a constructor method. What can we do with it? Now, you might remember, uh, ooh, I want to say last week or a couple weeks ago, we started dipping our toes into the concept of this. And this, remember, is a keyword that gets changed to be the referring to the context it, it is in. And I think that with classes and object-oriented programming, it's going to be significantly easier to understand what this, what the this keyword is. Allow me to show you what I mean. Inside our constructor, for example, Sorry, I'm just going to answer a quick question from Nabil. So what's the difference between the constructor and the greet? Let's first start with their similarities. They are both methods on the class. Constructor gets called automatically when you make a new shopping cart. Greet does not. Greet we need to call. Constructor is a, is a special method that gets called automatically when you instantiate a new shopping cart. Now, tell you what, inside constructor, let's console log this. Now, this is giving us an empty object. This is going to be really weird to, to wrap our heads around. So let me let me take us gently through this. Inside the context of the constructor, this refers to the shopping cart. Not the shopping cart class, but the instance of the shopping cart. Stephen B is asking, is constructor called automatically because of the keyword constructor or because it is the first method? It's because of the keyword constructor. If I put greet here, Look, it's still printing out the empty object. Const and notice notice how the editor makes it a more intense blue. Constructor is a special keyword for this method. OK? So this inside here is the instance of the shopping cart. Oop, sorry. Is the instance of the shopping cart, which, remember, is an object. Creating an instance of a class gives us an object. Now, what happens if I console log this outside of our class? It gives us undefined. This is because in the context of being here, 
this refers to nothing because we are at the outermost level of our script. Okay. Now, because insider constructor, because the keyword this refers to the object itself, just as we would with any other variable that's, a, that's an object, we can set properties on it. For example, this dot, actually, let's do it here. Um, this top total is equals to zero. Okay. Now remember, this is the object, the shopping cart itself. We're setting its total property to have the value zero. Notice what happens now when I console log cart. Now it's an object with a property. The property is total zero. We can set various properties. Tower Brilliance is asking, when you say instance, do you mean the moment that the user clicks on an item and it shows us up on a shocking? No. An instance is the object that is created when we make a new shopping cart. Cart, the variable cart, holds an instance of shopping cart. If we think about recipes, okay? Tell you what, let's throw all of this out for just a minute. Food. Okay, we have a class called food. Its constructor defines a property called name and sets its value to be apple. Watch what happens. We have two variables now. One is apple and one is banana. They are both instances of a new food. Okay? Now watch what happens if I go console log apple and console log banana. Stephen B, I'm I'm bookmark. Oh, sorry, I'm bookmarking this. No, no, no. It's good. It's good. It's good. Hear hear me out. Um, apple and banana are both instances of the food class. Okay. They are both food items. See, when I console log both of them, they both have the that they both have the property name apple. But here's the thing: they are different instances of a food. If I say banana.name equals banana, watch what happens now. I've taken my banana object, because remember, an instance is an object at the end of the day. Its, na its name property is now being set to banana. So now when I console log apple, I get apple. And when I console log banana, I get banana. Not only can I change properties, I can also add new ones. For example, okay, I know delicious isn't a flavor, but hear me out. So apple still has that one property and banana now has two properties. They are different instances of the food class, but they are both still foods. So an object, no, just so just asking, what if we don't want an object to start with the name as apple? We'll get to that later, I promise. I promise we will get to that later. Thank you for indulging me. Now let's go back to our shopping cart because it's going to have three properties. Total items, which is an empty array, and this dot tax rate is 8.25. And again like before,
Stephen B is asking, do you think it makes sense to conceive of a class like our class shopping cart as more of a function that is called to create an object? I don't know. I'm sorry. If it helps you understand it better, yes. For me, it is a template from which we create a new object, which has a series of functions. Cart, console, log, cart. I just want to show us what a cart looks like. It has a total, and items, and a tax rate. It is an object made up of these three properties. I'm going to move on to the next one. Now we're going to be adding a new method to our class. In this case, we're going to create an add item method. And the good thing about this one is that it's going to take parameters. Now, where this gets magical is that we can access and manipulate, um, we can access and manipulate properties in an object, in a class. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. Before I do any of this add item stuff, I just want to show us an example. Um, hear me out. Uh, say, say amount, OK? So we're defining a new method on our shopping cart that what it does is it says it does a console log. I have this.items.length items in me. Okay? What's cool about what's cool about classes is that you can access these properties inside it. So when we when we created a new shopping cart, it created a property for it that has items set to be an empty array. So we can access this empty or uh, this items property in any method of our class. Now, you're probably wondering, wait, what on earth is he talking about? Let's try it out. Const cart equals new shopping cart. Cart dot say amount. I have zero items in me. Let's follow this through real quick. We make a new shopping cart, and then we call the say amount method on it. What the say amount method does is it console logs, I have this.items.length. When we made a new shopping cart, we defined its items property to be an empty array. Now that we know this to be an array, we can call it that array's length property. And because it was instantiated as being an empty array, it has zero items. That's one part of it. Now, let's have, oh, Stephen B says, classes are in fact special functions as just, and just as you can define function expressions and function declarations, a class can be defined in two ways, a class expression or a class declaration. Stephen B, I, I'm very thankful. I'm going to probably abstract this away because I find it confusing, uh, and I'm sorry. Um, if it's helpful for you to understand it more as a function, please do it. Um, when I'm looking at other programming languages that don't do this as functions, I find it easier to think of this separately. But again, it's your call. Because as Nojo Sojo is asking, I have no idea what a classic, like in this context, what is a class expression? I'm guessing that this is a class expression, but that's beyond the scope of what we're doing today. So I don't want to go down too many rabbit holes, and I apologize. OK. <laughs> Let's go back to what we were doing before. We're going to be adding an empty add item method that takes two parameters, ID and products. Add item, which takes two uh, parameters, ID and product. Is that correct? I already forgot. ID and products. ID and products. Cool. 
that's the code written. Let's cover a little bit of what it does. The ID in this case is going to be the product that the user has added to their cart. And the second parameter is the array of product objects. The reason we're adding this products array instead of referring to it directly gives us some flexibility if we want to add additional product lists in the future. For example, if we don't want to just have de desserts. So Pat, Pat, let's keep going. First thing we're going to do is use the find method of the products to find the product that has a specific ID. Const product is equals to uh, products.find. And we've used find before. We're going to do an arrow function here to say, give me the product whose item.id is the same as ID. So what we're doing is here is when we add an item, we pass in the ID of the item we want to add and the list of products. So the product that we want to add to our cart is going to be made up of, is going to be the result of finding the item in our list of products whose ID matches the ID that we've passed in as a parameter. Cool. Let's pat pat and keep going. Instead of having this variable called be called, oh sorry, we're going to use destructuring to define a new to define two new variables, name and price. And we're going to destructure them from product. Santos is asking, so every time we call add item, we add our whole product list. We're not adding the whole product list. We're passing the product list. Oh yes as a second parameter. That is correct, Send. Thank you. Cool. So we've destructured the name and the price from the product. Cool. Pat, pat. Feeling pretty good about this. Let's keep going. Now, we're going to push that product into our shopping cart's items property. Now remember, we have a property in our shopping cart. Let me try that again. We have a property in our shopping cart called items. We can access that property in any method of our class with this keyword. Because remember, this refers to the shopping cart. So this dot items dot now we can manipulate this array push the product so we've taken our list of items and we've pushed to it the product itself we're not doing anything with the name and price yet and before we do anything else i just want to try no just so joe I'm, I know you're asking what does step 19 do? Oh, this one here. Okay. We're just getting the name and price properties from the product itself and just assigning them to a variable called name and price. We're use, doing this using destructuring. We're going to use these in a bit, I'll bet. Hello, hello. Okay. So const cart equals new shopping cart. Uh, Cart.add item one. Then we need the where I'm getting the ID one and I'm passing in the list of products, which remember is this one here. And Steven is correctly, in my opinion, confused about the fact that inside this add item function method, sorry, we're referring to we're passing in that products from products itself. We could pass in a different list of products here, and in this scope, 
products will not refer to the list of products above, but rather this parameter. So in the scope, this reference to products will be overwritten. It is generally not recommended to do this. So don't worry about it too much. Anyway, we've added an item to our cart. Let's see what happened if I console log cart. And I'm going to do two things, actually. I'm going to console log cart before and after adding the item with ID 1. So at first, items is an empty array with a total of 0 and a tax rate of 8.25. Then I add cart at item 1 with products. Next, now this is our shopping cart. Notice how it has how it has changed. Items is still an array, but now it has it has been pushed. It has had the vanilla cakes vanilla cupcakes pushed to it. This happened because we passed in the ID one. It went through that product list and said, "Hey, which one has the ID of one? Ah, it's the one with vanilla cupcakes six pack." It then destructured out name and price. We haven't used those yet, but that's fine. And then it manipulated the property items by pushing that product to it. Look what happens if I do it twice. Terrible idea, because if you, uh, you want to add something to a card, you only want to add it once. But I just want to illustrate that you can push twice, of course. Push as many times as you want. So I'm just saying I'm confused when to use the, this keyword and when not. Let's look at that because I think this is important. In our shopping cart, we are always going to need an items, a total, and a tax rate. If I were to have another f uh, method in here called, uh, say, total, and let's say that it console logs the total amount that I'm that I have, then I would need to know what the items are and what the total is. So I need access to these properties. But if inside a method, I oh, sorry, let me scroll back. If inside a method, I just need to have a product for a bit, I don't need to hold a reference to that product inside my shopping cart at all times. It's only in the context, in the scope of add item. So wait, where'd my where'd my add items go? Oh, I thought I lost it. So when we're adding an item, yes, we need to know what product we're working with. Let's make a variable, a temporary variable. But if I want to work with a property of my class, something like the items, then I need to refer to that property by saying, hey, give me the prop the property items of this. And remember, inside any method of a class, this refers to the instance of that class. Keep playing with this. It's confusing at first. Give it some time. It's pat pat. I want to do a couple more before we go for Q&A, because I bet you all are going to have a lot of questions. I mean, y'all have already been asking lots of great questions. Now, we need a total count of, of each product that the user has in the count. So, const total count per product equals to an empty object. Cool. Done that. Pat, pat. Now. We're going to loop through our items. And remember that items is a property of our class. So it's not just items. JavaScript's not going to know what items is. We need to know which items it is. This dot items, because that is the property of the shopping cart. We're going to loop through each of the items in our shopping cart. 
And that's going to take a parameter called dessert. Okay, I'm going to bookmark a couple of these. Bear with me, folks. Cool. So we've just we're just looping through our items. Pat, pat. Not doing anything yet. So our total count per product, which remember is an object. Using the ID of the current value as our property, update the value of the to be the current value plus one. Do not use the addition assignment operator for this. Okay. This. Sorry, not this. Total count per product. And remember, the key is the ID. Oh, sorry, dessert dot ID. Because it's the yeah, my bad. Is going to be equals to. Now remember, that total could be zero, and we did this a few lessons ago. So I'm just going to give us some more space. It's going to be total count per product dessert dot ID or zero plus one. So this object, we're going to manipulate its property dessert ID to be either that dessert ID. If it's undefined, then it'll be zero plus one. Cool, did it wrong. You should update the value total count per product to be the current value plus one. Okie dokie. Forget the zero thing then. My bad. So total count per product desert I desert ID plus one. Pat, pat. Now we're going to get an error because of dessert, the total count per product dessert ID is undefined. And you try to add one to undefined, you're going to get not a number. So to fix this, we're going to use brackets like I just deleted or zero. <laughs> fine. So we do it in an extra step. It's fine. It still works. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. I think this is going to be the last one I do before we do some. Um, some Q&A. We'll be back tomorrow, so don't worry. So we'll declare a new const current product count variable, and its value is going to be total count per product ID. So our current product count is going to be the total count per product, which we just finished calculating here but for the ID of the item that we just added. I did it wrong. Oh, it's product.id, my mistake. Um, it could be ID as well. Don't get too hung up on it, in my opinion. It's it, what, what FreeCodeCamp here expected was product.id, but because we know that product ID is the same as the ID itself, because we looked it up by it being the ID of the object that we just added, OK, so product.id, same thing as the cool kids once said, same difference. Right? Cool. Pat, pat. Now, I don't want to do homework today. So tomorrow, we'll be back starting from step 26. I would recommend, if you want to have some homework, I would recommend stepping through the rest of these so that you can come back tomorrow and have some questions for us. OK? Thanks for bearing with me. Let's do some Q&A. So Berke is asking, uh, I have seen people saying get element ID, get element by ID is older and less used today. What is your take on it, and what do people use instead? 
yeah, you're going to see some folks say, oh, actually, you shouldn't get element. You shouldn't use document.get element by ID. You'll probably see folks write instead uh, document. I actually did this at the beginning of the bootcamp. Query selector. Document. Now, whoops. Both of these lines of code are identical. I mean, not written, <laughs> not written identical. They do the same thing. You're going to see some opinions, especially on um, cool JavaScript developers, social media, of saying, oh, but this way of doing it is old and only the cool kids do it this way. Um, both ways of doing it are valid. Now, there's a concept of something called deprecation in programming. Sometimes features of a programming language will get deprecated, which means it'll say, hey, you can still use it, but you really shouldn't because someday it's going to disappear. As far as I know, get element by ID is not deprecated. So don't be afraid to use it. However, I like working with CSS selectors. So if it's up to me, I'm going to opt for query selector. But again, this is a matter of preference. And you know how I feel about matters of preference and uh, best practices. Do it one way, do it the other, be consistent. Note just how to say querying selectors for class get element of ID is not only for ID. No, 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 no. Query selector works for any CSS selector. So it doesn't have to be, I'm sorry, um, document.query selector can be, oh, Sean's got me. Query selectors can do class, IDs, elements. It can do elements with properties. Uh, hold on. Um, and the string. This is valid as well. This is why I prefer query selector. It gives me a bit more powerful. It can be any CSS selector. Uh, if you're curious about that, go check out the web development bootcamp. It's all recorded. Uh, cool. Where was I? <laughs> Eric makes a good point. When you use Eric query selector, you need to add an extra hashtag. So it's true. It is extra typing. Okay, next question. Uh, this is a keyword that has a special functionality to refer to the current context. E is similar in the function, but it's different because it has a naming convention of a parameter. So E could be te technically renamed to anything, but the this keyword, that's need to be used. Correct. When we're thinking of events, we are having a callback within us, within uh, with a parameter that we can call anything we like. However, the this keyword is consistent. It will always be called this in JavaScript. Okay, not always. I don't know what's going to happen in 10 years. But like for the time being, it's going to be called this. So yes. Is it accurate then to say use this when you're referring to something generated by the constructor? Stephen B, I'm sorry. I don't understand the question. Um, when, we're, when we're working with... When we're remember the constructor the constructor method gets called automatically when we instantiate or make a new instance a new object from a class. So we want to set the properties of that object, and in order to refer to that object and therefore update its properties, we need to use this because this, in the context of the constructor, refers as with any method in that class refers to the object that is generated by creating a new instance of that class. I deserve a medal for saying that in one go. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a bit convoluted. But essentially, this refers to the object itself, the shopping cart itself. OK, we got another question from Nojo Sojo. In step 16, it says, depending on where this is used, its reference changes. So this can refer to different objects if used somewhere else. Correct. If I have a different class. Banana. I can't think of something better. In this context, in the context of line 105, this is an instance of banana. 
in the context of line 110, this is an instance of shopping cart. Okay. Hope that helps. Uh, do we have any other? No, uh, we have one from Monica. Why do we use square brackets in the last few lessons? Is this standard syntax to get an object as a parameter? Apologies if this is obvious. No, 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 you're good, Monica. Don't apologize. Now, you're talking about this here. Now, square bracket syntax is used to set a property of an object. Okay. So what does that mean? Ob obj refers to an object. Uh, pff, flavor, delicious. I'm sorry, I, maybe I'm hungrier than I thought. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, if we want to change the flavor of our object, bad. Console log object. We can use dot notation to change it. We can also do it with square bracket notation. But this me. Hey, there you are. I was like, why is why isn't my why isn't my quote marks working? This is the same as this. Okay. This is a way to refer to that. You're very welcome, Monica. Okay. Uh, Stephen B's asking, it was about another question, asking when to use this when we are writing methods. And I wondered if we can use a constructor as a map legend, if you will, to know when to use this in writing methods in that class. I wonder if we can use the constructor as a map legend, if you will, to know when to use this in writing methods. Stephen B, I'm sorry. I, I, I really don't understand. Do you know what? Seeing as it's the end of the lesson, why don't you write this into the Discord and maybe folks who are a lot smarter than I am can try and understand? I'm really sorry. Um, I, I'm not sure what you mean by as as a as a map legend, and maybe it's very 7 p.m. here, and I'm my I'm not understanding. I'm sorry. Um, bring the question to Discord. Maybe it'll click and I can answer it later. Yeah? Or maybe someone understands better than I do. Last question, because we got to go. Class within class, uh, like functions without functions. I'm guessing you're asking, can I put a class inside a class? Maybe. Maybe don't. Maybe it's not a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> um, if you want to. I. I Suppose you can. It would be a class inside the context of a class. Yeah, maybe if you don't need to, don't. But hey, play around with it. Maybe it works. <laughs> you are far too patient with me, Stephen B. Thank you. Um, cool. No more questions for today. Remember, homework. Tomorrow we will... Start out steps. Oh, one last question for Nojo Sajo. Then what does this refer to in that class? Remember, it's restricted to the context. So if we, if suppose we had a class inside a class, it would refer to the inner class in that inner class. Otherwise, it would refer to the outer class when we're not inside the inner class. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> Ooh, y'all are trying to break my brain today. I love it. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for joining. Thank you all for coming. And uh, take it easy as well, huh? We're learning some mind-bending stuff as well. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.